everyone, it's Amanda from I Sew A Lot and I'm here today with my October Makes video. It's a little bit late because first of all I wanted to get one thing uh, finally finished before I um, got this video up and the other reason has been, and unfortunately I just can't avoid it, the light has been really really bad and obviously if you know me then uh, you will know that I am slightly rudimentary when it comes to my videos. I don't have studio lights. I film everything on my iPhone. So um, yeah, I was hoping I was going to be able to get a day where the light was slightly better. But unfortunately, that's not happened. So I'm going to try and do everything I can when I edit this to make it as bright as possible. And I really hope that you can see the garments. Um, unfortunately, I've got two, um, actually I've got three that are really dark. So fingers crossed you can see okay. So um, I'm going to jump straight in because I think I've got um, 10 things to show you. Um, so let's get cracking. Um, so I've had a month this month where not only have I sewn um, a couple of quite uh, big things, um, but I've also done a lot of sewing for other people. Um, I don't generally sew that much for other people, but this month has been a bit of an exception. So, the first things that I've sewn, and which I'm totally in love with, are, I've sewn another one of the mini tulip dresses. As you can see, I've got little um, snaps on there. It's got a little tiny pleat in the front, and it is actually reversible if you wanted to have it the other way out. And I made one of these for my niece recently as well. Um, but this is for my friend who has twins. Um, you can have it the other way out as well if you'd like, but seriously, who's going to want to when um, this cord is so lovely? Um, I have, as you can see, put some piping across, contrasting, and I hope it's showing up well enough on the footage, but it is a minty green, and if you can see, it's got a really um, tiny white spot and little roses on. So this is for my friend Sam who has a twin girl, um, a twin girl and boys. Does that make sense? Who has non-identical twins. Okay, so who are girl and boy? Right, so <laughs> I also sew for the little boy, um, the same lady, the same pattern company. I think it's called Paparita, but I will put her name here. And um, she has an Etsy store full of children's patterns and they are all amazing and all really, really simple. So I would definitely recommend them. So yeah, like I said, this is a romper. It's made from a needle cord again. And both these needle cords were from Fabric Galore. Um, Fabrics Galore, Fabric Galore, Fabrics Galore. And um, the green, minty green one was actually on sale a while ago, but this one wasn't. So um, this has uh, snaps all along the legs and again as with the um, dress if you wanted to it is reversible if I can show you. Um, so it's got the snaps on the inside and the outside um, and this side is actually from as you can see a gingham and this fabric which I think goes really well um, was from Higgs and Higgs. So yes, I'm hoping that it's not going to be too big uh, because her twins, I think, are in about three to six, but sometimes six to nine. And when I've made uh, the Purpurita patterns before, they have come up quite big, so I've had to size down. Um, but I'm figuring that as we're going into the uh, colder weather now, um, even if they don't fit now, they will fit right through the spring with the vest underneath. So yes, those are the two things that I've sewn for my friend. Okay, and also as I said in my last video, um, I had plans to make my boys some um, Halloween themed shirts for Halloween. And I've made this one. And as you can see, I've got contrasting um, under collar, button plackets, and um, yoke. It's got a small pleat in the back, as you can see. And these are the Oliver and S sketchbook shirts. This fabric is a Riley Blake fabric. I think it's from the Lost and Found range, I think. But I purchased it from Yumi and Mabel, the lovely Sally sent it to me. 
Um, and I also made this one, which I also love, um, which is also another Riley Blake print. I have a little trouble saying that, I don't know why. And if you can see, it's got little spiders on it, and the lines are the webs. So cute. And again, I, I did the same thing. So I've got a contrasting black under collar, placket, and yoke. And he did want black buttons, but unfortunately I didn't have any, so I tried to convince him to have white, and I would change them but I haven't got around to changing them. And um, luckily, as I've said before in my previous videos, I have um, got a new sewing machine and I haven't yet mastered buttonholes, but I am pleased to say that now I have, and um, they are super easy and turn out really, really well. So yes, I've made those two shirts as well, and they are the Oliver and S sketchbook shirts, in case I didn't already say that. I've made quite a lot of the sketchbook shirts, and if I was to recommend it, um, I would say it's a really great shirt pattern, but it's really, really short. This length that I've made, my boys are six and they're going to be seven in February. And I cut the length of this is supposed to be uh, for a 12 year old. So um, yeah, the, the length is really short and it is actually quite wide. So what generally I do with their patterns is, I cut the size for, um, the, like, uh, for the width, I cut their right size, sometimes I go down a size, but for these shirts I cut their size, so that was a size for a six year old, and then I add length to the bottom. This one, like I say, I cut the length for a size 12, but the width for a size six. So um, you do need to check your pattern measurements to make sure that they are going to fit. Fortunately, I got them to try on the shirts I made last year and they were um, fitted everywhere apart from um, they were a bit short. I really love the colour of this one. I keep telling him I'm going to steal it, but he's not letting me. So yes, watch the pattern size if you are going to make it. And I have noticed, like I said in my previous video, that Oliver and S have just released another shirt pattern uh, I think it's for adults and um, children. There's definitely a men's version, but I'm not sure if there's a woman's ver women's version as well. Um, but it's called the All Day Button Up, All Day Button Up shirt, something like that. So I might give that a try as well because that's got long sleeves, got two pocket, two breast pockets, um, chest pockets for boys. Clearly, um, I don't know what I'm saying today. Just to warn you. I've got a lot to get through, I'm trying to rush because uh, one of my boys is downstairs watching the Chamber of Secrets and my other boy is out with daddy and will be back soon for, and wanting lunch. So moving on, the next one, talking of daddy, um, I have made for uh, my husband some boxer shorts and this fabric as I've said before is from the lovely Megan of Pigeon Wishes. And the pattern is the Bobby Boxer Shorts by Flojo Fabrics. Um, and yes, uh, I had a bit of trouble with these. Now I am happy to say that they fit and he has worn them. Underwear is a bit of a weird thing, you don't want to get it wrong because there's no way you're going to spend all day wearing uncomfortable underwear. So I'm happy to say that he has worn them and he did not take them off and change them for a different pair. So they must have been comfortable. But, two things about this pattern, first of all, I sewed medium and I checked the sizing on my husband's um, ready to wear boxer shorts which gave me the waist measurement. So I went for the same measurement in the pattern as um, on his ready to wear shorts and they were too small. So I had to, I'd already done the fly and everything because he wasn't here when I was making them unfortunately. Um, so I'd already done the fly and everything, um, so I had to undo all of the side seams and I undid the back seam and I have just um, used a really really tiny seam allowance on them. Um, I, as you can see I've just gone to the edge of my overlocking, so what's overlocking? 5mm, so that's how big my seams are. Um, and I used plush elastic which I spoke about. Um, in my previous video, which is the soft backed elastic that you normally get in boxer shorts. Um, and the other thing with that pattern that I found really, really confusing, the instructions unfortunately weren't that clear, but 
um, and I managed to sew it together here by following the instructions and then obviously realised that that <laughs> wasn't right because there needs to be a gap there but um, all of the pattern lines are the same so you know obviously in every other kind of pattern I've ever sewn um, the pattern lines um, so that you can choose the correct size are different so it's easy to follow the size that you want well on this pattern all of the pattern lines are exactly the same they're just a solid line and I found it really confusing when I got round um, to cutting out the crotch curve um, to figure out which line I was supposed to be following. So bear in mind that um, that is a bit of an issue. Um, I didn't follow the instructions with the waistband. I stitched my elastic on as you can see and I've turned it down and then I've stitched it again so I've got a double, double stitching and that worked really well. And I do know, because I've spoken to a couple of people on Instagram, there is a free boxer short pattern which is really similar to this and it's called the Darcy Boxer Short and it is by Measure Twice Cut Once, I think that's what it is. Um, I'll put um, it here if that is incorrect, I'll just put it there anyway. And I'll put a link down below in the description box so you can have a look at that if you want to. But yes, it's a free pattern and you can make it for women as well I believe but yes so um, these are a success but they were supposed to be a really easy pattern which actually were a bit of a pain okay so the other thing I made for my husband as you've seen in my previous video is the and you're never gonna see this today you wouldn't see it on a good sunny day but you're not gonna see it today um, and it is the Jennifer Lauren Auden cardigan and if you would like to hear more about it, I've actually done a separate video reviewing this pattern um, and I'll put the card up now so that you can go and see it. Um, and in my video I mentioned that there was a little bit of pulling in the middle and this seemed to rise up slightly um, when he's wearing it. And I have since established that I think it's mainly due to the fact that I did use in the interfacing but I think it was slightly too heavyweight so it didn't have the right amount of stretch. So I think if you used a really good knit interfacing, you wouldn't have that problem. So I think it was my error, nothing to do with pattern. Okay, so that was all of my um, makes for other people this month. And then I also uh, made this for myself. And this is the Pauline Alice All Day Dress. And I have made it, and you may have seen it in my previous haul video, but it's from this blush pink scuba which is a suede effect, if I can get close so you can see. So it does have a nap, um, and it's really, really soft. And if I could show you, I um, made it with using the Jennifer Lauren laneway skirt. And it's got um, quite an unusual way to uh, put a dress together. Everything is put in flat, and then you stitch the whole side seam up which obviously means that you're able to match this seam really, really well and your underarm seams really well, which is really good. It's got princess seams and um, it also has panels in the back. No, darts in the back, that's it. Darts in the back, panels in the front. So originally I was going to make this with a box pleat skirt, but unfortunately, as you can see, um, this fabric has a lot of structure. So when I made it, it was like a big triangle and I didn't think it was the most flattering. So I decided actually, no, I'm just gonna make an A-line skirt from the laneway dress because I love that skirt. It's a really, really great um, base for an A-line skirt to put on any dress. And fortunately, um, their blocks must be quite similar because I didn't have trouble with uh, fitting it to the bodice. Um, I, if I made it again, I think I would take maybe a, a tiny wedge out of the front because my princess seams are slightly off. Um, they're slightly to the side. Um, so I would do that. And I may even um, take the shoulders, um, the neckline up slightly, but then if I took the front in, that might resolve that issue anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with this dress. It's so warm because it's scuba, and this time, time of year, scuba's really, really fab. 
Um, I've worn it a lot and uh, yes, I really love it. So um, the pattern comes with lots and lots of options. It's really, really good value for money. It has a uh, wrap front style, I believe. It has this plain um, bodice style and it does have another bodice option, but I can't remember what it is. Um, it comes with a flared skirt, which has got lots of panels, and a pencil skirt. I'll put, try and put the line drawing here so that you can see it. But it's really, really good value for money. I got the PDF, and I think it was something like eight euros or something like that. So it was really good value. Um, I was going to use this for my um, one week, one pattern challenge. Um, but actually, just lately, I've been really loving trousers. So... Um, my next make I'm going to show you, but I've decided I think I'm going to go with the trouser option. So um, I'm just going to get changed, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so uh, like I said, I'm really really loving the trousers at the moment. So um, my obsession continues with the pattern McCall's M7547, which is a dungaree pattern, but it also has the option for trousers. And like I've said before, this pattern for me, um, it just fits me really really well. So um, I use it to make jeans, I've made dungarees, and I've also made trousers, you know, formal trousers, tailored trousers. And um, yes, it's really great and I really like it. So I've decided that I'm actually going to use that pattern for my um, one week, one pattern challenge that's being run by the lovely Shona of uh, Satisfaction. And if anybody fancies signing up, you just hop over to her blog. And um, if you um, click the link on there, then you should be able to find it and that's where you sign up and it's got everything about the uh, terms and whatever. So yeah, check it out. But I was going to use the Aldea but I've decided to switch. So I made these trousers, they're the same, obviously you've seen these before on me. But as you can see, um, I have made these from a brushed cotton and I'm hoping that it kind of looks a bit like a wool because I was a bit worried that it looked like I was wearing felt trousers. Um, but they are so comfortable and as you can see I kept with the front pockets but I haven't put any um, pockets on the back um, it's got a side zip which goes all the way up into the waistband and um, yes I think on the actual pattern you have an overlap here and you can either put buttons or snaps and when I've made my jeans I have overlapped it and put snaps on because I think it's quite difficult to get a concealed zip all the way up through a denim waistband so I would definitely recommend that um, to save your zips and yes, so I have made these I haven't gone with the faux fly because like I said I don't really understand faux flies um, and yes, I've worn them lots, they're really comfortable um, I'll put, um, I'll try and put in here a full length picture so you can see they're quite a wide leg and on these because I've made them before from stretch fabrics and when I first put these on, which was at the Satisfaction Sewing Day, they did not fit. But it was like they were sprayed on. I could just get the zip done up. Um, so I undid them and I've actually sewn them with a much smaller seam allowance. Um, and now they're fine. I kept the um, bum and the crotch um, seams the same. I just undid the side seams and I came out... Let me have a look. Um, yeah, I think I used a one centimetre seam um, on all those seams. But yes, they're, they're fab. They're so warm because obviously cotton has um, thermal properties. So for this time of year, really, really good. So yes, I've made those. And the next thing actually I can slip on. And I have posted about this on Instagram. And um, in case you don't know, I am I'm actually going to be teaching a workshop at Satisfaction HQ and that's on the 19th of November and I'm going to be teaching this. Oh. So this is the Soha 7 toaster sweater and oh my goodness I am so in love with this sweater. I uh, took part in the Sew My Style challenge um, towards the beginning of the year but unfortunately I fell out of love with it. A little bit because the patterns weren't really to my taste um, but the so the toaster sweater was one of the patterns that I did make um, but it was the other version I can't remember which version is which I think this is a toaster 
one. And as you can see, I've made it from this really, really beautiful um, quilted Ponteroma from Sewers Faction that I got on the sewing day. And it is so cosy. And I was going to get some of the black, but I noticed that she's so sold out. So I, I have actually managed to get some from Fabric Godmother. Um, so I'm going to make a black one. But it's got the funnel neck, it's got these really um, deep cuffs, which I really like. And it also has a deep waistband. Hopefully you can see that. And yes, it's slightly um, cropped, slightly. I don't know what size I made, but I honestly, I have trouble taking it off. As soon as it comes out of the wash, I want to put it back on. And I think it's not only the fit, but it's also the fabric. The fabric, seriously, is so lovely. Um, but yes, I'm not sure if Shona has any more left in stock. Um, I know she last, no, I think the black was definitely out of stock last time I looked because that's why I bought it from somewhere else. But it may be that she is going to get some more in. So keep your eyes peeled. If not, like I say, hop over to Fabric Godmother because they did have some, they have just got an order in of this fabric. So yes, it's lovely. Right, so the last thing, which is a good thing, and which is the reason why this video has taken so long to get onto my channel. So I will be back in a minute. Okay, so I am really, really hoping that you're gonna be able to see this, but this is, of course, my Claire coat by Closet Case Files. Um, I have made, I think this one is version B, and version A has a zip and not such a high funnel neck. I'm gonna stand back and show you, and hopefully the light's gonna shine on me so you can see it, but I have obviously made this before. I think it was, about January um, but I'm not sure how long ago but um, yes when I made this version I graded down in the hips because the last one I made was actually quite roomy I have also got this fab lining which is a hundred percent viscose lining from Sewers Faction I've used lining on the inside as well if you can see and I put added some piping it doesn't tell you to do that in the pattern but I just think it makes it look really cool and um, I've used these giant snaps they're prim ones um, and I used these in my last one but I think because they're black they really go really well and um, let me take it off so I can try and show you in more detail um, I also added a cuff, which is the same um, way as I did for my previous version. And um, I think that's a really great finish. And like I've said before, in my previous video when I talked about the last one I made, um, the sleeves were too short on me. So when I um, put my arms forward, they were coming sort of halfway up my arm. So I cut a big chunk off of the sleeve to, just to make it look like a proper cuff rather than I just added a bit of fabric because it was too short. Um, so this lining is amazing, it was a pain <laughs> to uh, cut because it's so slippery and lovely um, and, but it was fine to sew, it's really hard to pin and really hard to cut but once it, my sewing machine got hold of it, it was fine. Um, I also made, as you can see, a lovely um, loop in the same fabric and I love it. I think it's a really great coat. And I'm so glad that I sized down. I think, I think last time I made, because what I did was I knew that the sleeves and everything were fine and the fit across the shoulders on me was fine. So when I made this version, the only um, bits I took in were the edge seams on all the panels. Um, because as you can see, I've just seen a big thread hanging off there. Um, it has a front panel and then it has, um, hopefully you can see, worst colour fabric ever to try and film, but it has a panel under the arm, as you can see, and then it has a back, which is all one piece, but yeah, so it has a front panel and then it has this panel which runs down the side. 
Um, the pockets are inseam pockets, which I really like, and I think is really unusual on a coat, but you can't see them, which I really like that feature. But yeah, and my um, lining, I just, I love it. It's so nice. I'm definitely gonna get some more just to line dresses. Um, but yes, I am really pleased with it. And the hand sewing, everybody knows I hate hand sewing. And it took me a whole evening to sew my studs on and to hem everything. The only thing that I have a bit of an issue with is I caught all of my, um, where you have your seams on the back, it's always a good idea to catch them inside, which I have done, but where the back has quite a long distance, so I've got all of this distance between the two areas where I've actually caught the um, hem, um, I think I need to go back in and just put a little catch stitch in the middle of the centre back, because I feel like it's rolling down slightly when I wear it. So I might have to do that. But yes, um, I must have, um, I think last time when I made the clear coat, I lined it with a um, crepe, but it was a stretch crepe. I think it was a stretch crepe. And I had awful trouble um, getting everything to line up and fit properly at the end. Um, but when I made this version, everything went together so easily. And I have to say about this pattern, um, the actual pattern itself, the printed instructions, um, I found slightly confusing but um, like I've said before Heather has a um, complete sew along for this coat and I didn't look at the pattern at all when I made this version I just followed the sew along on her website it's quite difficult to find you have because it's archived but all her sew alongs I believe are in one place now so if you get to the right area, you'll be able to find it. You used to be able to select the pattern as if you were gonna buy it, and then it had an option there to look at the sew along. And there's 13 parts to this coat, and it's a really, really great sew along. Like I say, I didn't look at the pattern instructions at all. Okay, so that is it. And um, like I said, I've got some really exciting things coming up this month. Um, I'm teaching the workshop for Shona at Satisfaction on the 19th. Um, so if you would love to come and make yourself a winter sweater with me, um, I would. it would be really great to see you. Um, and the other exciting thing, which I can't really say too much because it's in the real baby stages, is that I, at the moment I am trying to um, sort out a studio space um, to run my own sewing classes. Um, obviously I um, have no you know, specific qualifications but I think I can inspire people um, to sew and I think that I can give them success. Um, I'll obviously only be running beginner and sort of intermediate classes. Um, I'm hoping gradually um, down, the li and down the line to do things like um, trouser courses and things like that because I think that I can um, help people to get the fit that they're after um, because I think one of the most crucial things about making your own clothes is to ensure that it does actually fit and um, so I think that I can do that for people so I'm going to be running uh, beginner to intermediate classes I'm going to do um, single classes and workshops and also um, courses for people who really want to get into dressmaking and are just a little bit unsure of where to begin. So I'm hoping to get that up and running um, and obviously I'll be able to talk about that a bit more once um, it's launched uh, but it's not too far away so really really exciting times. So um, I'll be back soon with a haul because I've got loads of plans as always uh, for this month and um, yes, and I really, I know I say this every month, but I do have an idea for a one hour challenge. Um, so I'm really hoping that I will be able to do that. Uh, the reason that I've fallen behind a little with those is purely down to the lighting. Because like I say, I don't really have any studio lights. I just, you know, it just depends whether it's a sunny day or not. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I will be able to get that out to you. Okay, so that is it. Sorry for the ramble, um, but thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!